Hi, in this video we will learn how to plot set of all feasible allocations in an Edgeworth box. Recall that set of all feasible allocations is all x1, y1, x2, y2 such that x1 plus x2 is equal to omega 1x plus omega 2x and y1 plus y2 is equal to omega 1y plus omega 2y. So in order to learn how to plot this, let us consider an example in which omega 1x plus omega 2x is 10 and omega 1y plus omega 2y is 5. So the total endowment of x in the economy is 10 and the total endowment of y in the economy is 5. We'll learn how to plot this set of all feasible allocations for these values in an Edgeworth box. So let's do that. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to plot the axis of individual one. This is how they're going to look. Since there are 10 units of X and five units of Y available in the economy, we have drawn the X axis till 10 and we have drawn the Y axis till five. Now let us plot the axis of individual two. For individual two, the axis will be drawn in an unusual way the amount of commodity X will be increasing in the left direction and the amount of commodity Y will be increasing in the down direction. Again, we are going to make sure that, that we are going to draw the X axis till 10 units and we are going to draw the Y axis till 5 units. Now we are going to just place the axis of individual 2 over the axis of individual 1 to get the following. This is known as Edgeworth box. Now let us check how this Edgeworth box represents a set of all feasible allocations. So consider any allocation or any division of the total endowment such as individual 1 is consuming 5 units of X and 5 units of Y and individual 2 is consuming whatever remains which is 5 units of X and 0 units of Y. So where is this allocation? located in the Edgeworth box? Well, that's simple. It's located right here. You can easily check that this allocation correspond to 5 units of X for individual 1 and 5 units of Y for individual 1. And if you want to look at it from the top, then individual 2 is consuming at this particular allocation only X because the commodity Y is increasing for individual 2 in the downward direction and this point lies on the horizontal axis of individual 2. So individual 2 is consuming 5 units of X and 0 units of Y at this particular allocation. So let's call this allocation A. Now there are other allocations for example let's plot allocation B which is maybe 6 and 2 and individual 2 consumes the remainder which is 4 and 3. So now let's plot this. This is our allocation B because individual 1 is consuming here 6 units of X and 2 units of Y and individual 2 is consuming the remainder which is 4 units of X and 3 units of Y. So any feasible allocation can be represented in, in this Edgeworth box. Now let us do the example that we discussed in the previous video and let me show you how to present those allocations in an Edgeworth box. So in the previous video we did the following example. Individual 1's endowment of X and Y were 4 and 4 respectively and individual 2's endowment of X and Y was 6 and 4. So the total amount of X in the economy was 10 and the total amount of Y in the economy was 8. And we saw that allocation A, B, C were feasible. So let's start with the endowment. This is how we'll plot the endowment allocation. So the dimension of the Edgeworth box will be 10 by 8 because the total amount of X available in this economy is 10 the total amount of Y available in this economy is 8. This point will be the endowment allocation 
because at this point individual one is consuming four units of x four units of y and individual two is consuming six units of x and four units of y the next example allocation a is individual one consuming 10 units of x and nothing of y and individual b consuming nothing of x and eight units of y so this will be given by this point in the edge box now check that allocation B and C can also be represented in the Edgeworth box in the following way. So check that yourself that this is allocation B, this is how we are going to plot allocation B and this is how we are going to represent allocation C in the Edgeworth box. Okay, so in this video we have learned how to plot the set of all feasible allocations in an Edgeworth box. In the next video we will see how to compare these allocations, which ones are efficient allocations, which ones are not, and if you are going to leave things to the market, then what are we going to get? What will be the market outcome? See you in the next video. Thank you.